Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. Today we have a very special episode for you guys. Stacy from Oregon wanted to share her encounters with me, and she was willing to let me record the call. It's not every day that someone with an encounter like this is willing to openly talk about it, but luckily for me, Stacy heard my encounters, and that inspired her to reach out to me. Stacy lives near the Bluff Creek area, and it blows my mind thinking about how much woods there is here in Missouri, but when you think about out west, it's just on a whole different level. And then when you think about the size of Canada, Alaska, it really blows your mind. And um, if you look on Google Earth at Russia, it will really blow your mind how much forest there is out there. Stacy had a real encounter with an unknown creature or being whatever you want to call it. And I want you guys to show your support and care in the comments. Keep her and her family in your prayers. And this could happen to anyone, so please be open-minded. I also wanted to mention the Native Americans have warned us for many generations of these things, and it seems like they were right. I think more people should listen to their words and advice, and as crazy as it all sounds, they were highly aware of this phenomenon. It's one thing hearing that the land is cursed or it's sacred, but to actually experience it for yourself, it will change you and give you a real understanding of what they were talking about. I want to thank the people who have helped out with the PayPal and purchasing merchandise. Although we don't have near enough to buy the Quiet Cat e-bike, I just went ahead and took a big hit and purchased the darn thing and um, I got a really good deal for it on Black Friday so I felt like I had to do it. So the only thing on our list is the high-end game cameras such as um, the Spartan cameras or Exodos cameras or um, we could also get the song meter audio recorder which I think would be really good because you can leave it out in the woods for a really long time. Alright guys with all that being said let's dive into this next cryptid encounter from the state of Oregon. Hey Stacy, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Good to hear. Stacy, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself and these encounters that you experienced. Okay. Um, well, I am a the descendant of pioneers. My family came to Oregon in 1852 in a wagon train into the Willamette Valley. And right now I live in Southern Oregon. I've been here for about 23 years, but I've basically always lived in Oregon. And we have had Bigfoot stories from the time that I can remember. Um, my first memory of having something happen when, is when I was about three years old. I had an aunt and uncle that lived up on the side of a mountain outside of Springfield, Oregon. And they were pretty far out. And my uncle had bear dogs he hunted. And my whole family was up there spending a weekend at their place. You know, we were playing with our cousins and everything. And in the middle of the night, we heard something hit the roof of the house. Now, their house butted right up against the back of a mountain. And the entire, there was like a huge swath up the back of the mountain where all the trees had been clear cut. And then there was forest on either side. So my dad and my uncle grabbed guns and ran out back. And their trash can was smashed laying behind the house. And my uncle's dogs were going absolutely crazy. They they were on really long, heavy chains because they were they were dangerous dogs. And so um, my dad and my uncle went and got the dogs and they started tracking up that cleared out swath up the, the front of the mountain. And dad and my uncle said that they could smell something that smelled like decay 
and garbage and um, just pretty awful smell. And they they got about halfway up the mountain and the dogs started freaking out and turned and basically dragged my my dad and my uncle back down the mountain. And they got looking for prints, got their flashlights out and started looking for prints. And they found big footprints around in the backyard. It was all just mud back there. And what they surmised is that a, a Bigfoot had come down, taken the trash can, walked up partway up the mountain, turned around and threw the trash can at the top of the house. So um, that was the first time I, I remember hearing anything. Um, when I was about 13, my my mother and my stepfather moved me and my sisters up onto the Puget Sound out to Whidbey Island. And we lived in a brand new housing development and directly behind the house was just forest. And it went on for miles. And it it's really dense up there. It's not like the forest in Oregon where you can walk between the trees. There's so much brush and wild rhododendron and stuff that, that grows and binds up into the trees that you have to dig your way through it. And so one day, my youngest sister and I had made a path from the back of our house through to where I, I'm pretty sure when the house was being built, they were digging um, gravel and stuff out to lay like a foundation down to build the house on because it was all dug out back there and we wanted to go back and check it out. So we we made it back there and we were coming back and we started smelling something. She's She's like three years younger than I and I was 13 at the time. And it was something that we had never smelled before. It, to me, it smelled, it smelled like rot. It smelled like animal feces and hot tar. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a really strange combination, but that was what came to mind. And it was so strong that it burned my nose. And I told my sister, this isn't right you know, I don't know, maybe there's a dead body or something out here. We need to get home. And so we turned around and started digging our way back to the house. And we started hearing something from the gravel pit coming toward us. And it sounded really big. Like when it would take steps, we could feel the vibration in the bottoms of our feet. And so I grabbed a hold of her and you know, we we started off running and whatever it was, I'm I'm pretty sure now as an adult that it was a Sasquatch. It was tearing through those trees. You could hear trees breaking and branches breaking and the brush being ripped out. And I thought we I thought there's no way we're going to make it back to the house. We've got to be dead. But we did. And as soon as we got into our backyard, all the sound from the forest stopped. And of course, we tore into the house and started screaming and crying and telling our older sister and my mom. And they they just didn't believe us. So um, yeah, that's kind of where we left that. We, we never tried to go back into the woods again. We stuck strictly to the front yard. Um, and I wasn't there for very long. I moved to go live with my father down in the Willamette Valley in Albany um, at the end of that summer. So um, I didn't have anything else that happened up there. So um, years and years and years later, um, my kids are, I have four children and they're basically grown my youngest one was like 15 and she still lived at home but we bought a home in medford oregon and we lived in this area between medford and jacksonville and jacksonville is a really historic little pioneer town it's got a long history but it's 
all woods. There's like farmland and then mountains and woods that just go on and on and on for miles. This little farmland area that we lived in, um, it, it was like a, a older development from the 1950s and 1960s. And we were remodeling our house. As soon as we moved in, we all noticed that we could hear people talking in the house when there wasn't anybody else in the house but us. Um, the lights would flicker, doors would open and close. So we all just kind of went, well, we, we bought a haunted house. Um, anyway, um, I, I smoke. So at night I would go out and sit on my front porch and smoke my cigarettes and just listen. And periodically I would hear a roar that it came from the Jacksonville area, which was about five miles away from us. But this is, it's kind of like a little valley with farmland in the bottom and then mountains all around it. So sounds will reverberate and, and bounce off of those mountains. And the first time I heard it, I thought that that can't be a bear. It doesn't, it sounds too big to be a bear. It, it came from at least five miles away. I'm thinking up on the mountains that are right in behind Jacksonville. That's the direction it came from. But it just echoed through the whole little valley that we lived in. And I went in the house and told everybody, I think I heard a Sasquatch. And my daughter was like, oh, wow, that would be cool. Um, my husband, I don't think, believed any of it. But we lived there for about eight years and periodically at night I would hear this thing roar. And then after a while, my mom moved in with us and I told her about it. And I don't know whether she believes me or not, but she was sitting out front one night by herself and she came trucking in the house really fast. And she said, Stacy, I heard it, which, you know, that made my day. I was, that was awesome. So I had I had a witness, um, a really good friend of mine, Linda, and her grandson were camping at our at our house one weekend, and they heard it in the middle of the night. So um, this this is definitely Bigfoot territory. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you describe what the roar sounded like, and what can you compare it to? Um, well, I've listened, I've, I've watched a lot of your, um, your podcast and it, it's, it's bigger than a lion could make. I mean, that's, that's the biggest mammal other, other than an elephant, which they don't sound, a Sasquatch doesn't sound like an elephant. Mm -hmm. Um, like prehistoric sounding. Yeah. Yeah. You could, I could tell just by how deep it was. It was a, a just powerful and really, really deep. And I knew when I heard it that it would take a massive set of lungs to produce a sound like that. Um, I've heard stories where people have been very near when a Sasquatch will yell and it reverberates through their bodies. And I can understand that. I haven't ever felt it. I would, I hope to someday, but just from being as far away from it as I was and as loud and deep and primal as that sound was, I could not even imagine being, being as close as some of these people that, you know, that have talked about it. Um, yeah. And can yeah, you, was, um, can you describe the area? Like, what does it look like? Where was the Sasquatch at? Is there like mountains and moss there? Giant trees? Yes, it is. It it's, um, right on the edge of like Humboldt County, um, where the, um, the Bigfoot video was filmed. We're probably a hundred miles from there. And the terrain is exactly the same. 
Mm-hmm. It's very big mountains, lots and lots of oak, lots of madrone, lots of pine trees, old growth timber. There are streams and rivers and lakes that just permeate this place. Gold, uh, Jacksonville was really, really famous for gold mining back in the 1800s um, because of all the rivers and, and things that are up there. They hauled a lot of gold out of there. Yeah. Um, and the mountain, there are areas up in, up in there that really nobody's ever been. So this is close to the Bluff Creek area where the Patterson-Gimlin footage was captured at? Is that what you're talking about? It's probably, yeah, we're probably about 100 miles north of where that film was was taken. I could be wrong. It could be a little bit further. But geographically, we're in that area. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty close. And that's certainly in Sasquatch territory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even I live in Grant Pass, and as you're coming into town, if you're if you're approaching it from the north, when you get off of I-5, the first thing you see is this huge carving of Bigfoot. So, I mean, everybody acknowledges, yeah, he's here. And I've I've talked to people. We I went on a trip one time down into the Redwoods, and a state police officer was in there, and he was telling us about. A Bigfoot encounter he'd had like a week before that and I told him well, I, I live um, at Jump Off Joe Creek and he's like that place is notorious is very well known for Bigfoot um, in fact right after we moved here within probably the first three days I was sitting outside smoking and I heard a tree knock I didn't, I haven't heard anything else since then, but as soon as I heard it, I yelled out, I hear you. I know you're there. That's pretty awesome. And then um, probably about three months later, I found a huge rock set down right by my camper. And there weren't any, there are rocks that trim our campsite, but they're all stacked up nice and neat. There aren't just these big, huge rocks sitting around. And this thing was set right at the end of my camper. So I, I told my husband, that's my gift from Bigfoot. That's my bit. I'm, I'm taking that with me when I leave. So, okay. Um, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Oh, no, you're fine. Keep um, going through each experience and, um, I'm listening the best I can and just writing down questions as you go through your story. Okay, some of the stuff, I swear, some of the stuff that I have seen, it sounds it sounds like I'm lying. And if I didn't have other people that could back it up, I wouldn't even believe me. I don't understand how one person can see the weird things that I have seen. But like at, at that same house over by Jacksonville, Um, one night my daughter and I are sitting outside and we hear someone walking across the roof of our neighbor's house and it's like 10 o'clock at night and, and they're striding. They're not sneaky, creepy crawling. They're striding across the roof with heavy footsteps. So we both kind of lean out and look up at the roof of, of the neighbor's house and then this this just sounds crazy we hear what sounds like batman unfolding his wings like a heavy whomp and then we hear nothing and then up the road from us past our house and about i don't know 30 feet up the road we hear someone's feet hit the road and just start walking and um god it was insane i told her uh i think batman just like flew over that flew over us and she's like what could that be a batman do we have mothman we don't have anything like that here we have no legends of any flying anything we only heard it that one night 
And I know that people don't believe me when I tell them that. I, I had actually forgotten about it. And my daughter was telling her husband about it. And she had to call me because I think he thought she, she was lying or, or something. And I went, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Batman walked across the neighbor's roof, unfolded his wings, and landed in the middle of the road and just strolled on by. Wow. Yeah, that is creepy. And my blood just went cold. And I had deja vu there for a second. I literally just interviewed a lady yesterday that gave the exact same description. And um, it sounds like the same creature. I even told her it sounds like Jeepers Creepers to me. And um, that's creepy. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, and and I've, I've talked to other people that, you know, have lived in the Medford area for a long time. And and I've, I've asked people, we don't have a Mothman here, right? I mean, I've been here 20 some years. If there was something creepy crawly like that, I'd know about it because, you know, my interests have always been in that direction. And the only thing I can, my daughter said, maybe it was a vampire. Yeah, I, I don't think vampires are real. Did it sound but like it had again, hooves or anything like that? It sounded like it was wearing men's dress shoes. Hmm. Yeah, Mothman is a good description. I wish I would have thought of that whenever I was talking to the lady yesterday. I, I, I didn't think of that. That's a good theory. Yeah, that was that was bizarre. I think back on it even now, and it's like if I hadn't seen it and heard it and, you know, pinch myself because I'm not dreaming and I know I'm not crazy, but to have something like that happen, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Was there snow out and did you contact the neighbors? No, there wasn't any snow. I, I'm pretty sure we were outside, you know, with, with no jackets on or anything. So mm -hmm. it had to have been early summer or, or late summer or early fall because yeah. it was, it was nice. The sky was clear. Um, you know, owls were swooping around and, so yeah, what, it was what'd just you hear? this random. You heard like a swoosh sound, like wings, because I I recall you saying it sounded like Batman unfolded his wings. Yeah, you know when when Batman has his cape and he jumps off of something and he grabs his cape and whips it out on both sides. Hmm. It's like a head, a heavy, leathery, just wolf. Yeah, yeah, I can. It picture sounded it in my like mind. he folded his wings out and just and no sound when it crossed over it had to have crossed over the top of our house and then it landed far enough down the road that i mean there there aren't there weren't any street lights there at the time and we both got up and kind of took a few steps out into the yard and leaned down and was looking down the road to see if we could see something and there was absolutely nothing there yeah, that's terrifying, and um, hopefully it wasn't a Mothman, because they say if you encounter a Mothman, it, it's a bad omen, but hopefully that was for your neighbors. I don't mean to bring it on them, I'm just saying. No, well, you know what? They probably had it coming. They weren't very nice, but anyway. Okay, so we had that experience there, and then living in the same house, um, we had an Albertsons that was probably two miles up the road toward town. And I had gone up late at night, right before they closed to do like a rush. We need milk for tomorrow morning or something. And I was driving back. I had just left the parking lot and was on Jacksonville highway headed home. And a massive dog came from the parking lot of a laundromat that's a, just a little further up the street and ran right in front of my car and I had to slam my brakes on so that I didn't hit it and it just was in a full out run with its tail hanging straight out behind it and after it passed I realized that I could see the entire back and rear end and tail and the top of the head and the ears of that dog over the hood of my car 
and I was driving a driving a Buick Regal. So it's, you know, it's a large car. It's not way high off the ground, but we had a St. Bernard, a 200 pound St. Bernard. And when he walked in front of my car, I could see his head and his tail, but this thing, I could see the entire back of it. And have you ever seen a Manx cat? Mm -hmm. Their back legs are longer than their front legs. They look kind of like a bobcat. This thing's back legs were way longer than its front legs. Its rear end was really high up in the air. And at first I was thinking, that's a, wow, I've never, it, it kind of looked like a German shepherd. But I thought, that's just, that's just crazy large. And I went home and I told everybody about it. And at this point, people are like, okay, well, what'd you see today, Stacy? Okay, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Got to tell somebody. And, you know, they were asking, well, what do you think it was? And I said, well, okay, you know, the roar that none of you have heard that only mom and Linda and I have heard this thing. I suppose if it were closer, it, it could have made a, a roar like that. But it's, it, it's, I said, I, a werewolf. We don't have wolf men up here. The only thing we have is Sasquatch, supposedly. And probably about a month later, the exact same situation happened to my daughter as she was driving my car. And she came in the house just completely white and told me I saw the werewolf. It ran in front of the car. I almost hit it just like you. And, and I was like, okay, well, I guess we're both telling the same lie. I mean, how can that be real either? Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. So the back legs were a lot longer than the front legs. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, they were. Okay. And the head looked like a German shepherd. What color was it? It was a brown, like a light brown, not quite tan, darker than that. Mm -hmm. And then the the tips of its fur was was really dark. Okay. It had really long fur. Was like, it long like a, all the way around or just like around its neck? No, it was it was long all over its body. Okay. Because I, as it ran past me, my head followed it, and it it actually ran up a residential street. It's like the the very last little neighborhood before you hit the highway and go out, and it's only one street with houses on both sides, and it dead ends. But it went trucking right up that street. It came from the right, ran across the road, and ran off my left up into that residential area up the street and um Chrissy my, my daughter um I think she was I think she was a little further up there's an elementary school and then there are fields on both sides of the highway before you hit the oak grove that we lived in and I'm I'm thinking that hers was like right on the other side of the school, right where those, the two fields began, but it ran it. She had to slam on the brakes, the exact same situation. Yeah, that is interesting. And the fact that you both seen it is um, proof that it's out there. Do you think it's a hellhound or a dog man? What do you think it is? Um, Something else. It didn't look like a mutated animal. Mm -hmm. It, I, it I actually. Heard... Oh, go ahead. Well, it looked like a breed of something that I've never heard of and never seen before. It didn't look like it was a mix of other things. Um, it didn't look like it had any like mutated parts on it that was attempting to look like a dog, but didn't quite get there. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard from dogman researchers that the younger dogman 
will um, be on all fours most of their lives and it's not until they get older that they start to stand up upright but i don't know oh wow yeah it's hard to say wow and i know there are other cryptids out there that are canine like and they're not a dog man or not a hellhound it's just something different you know like chupacabra or something but no um what you seen was um something unusual and it's living out in the area and you know for sure it's not someone's dog or some wolf out there is that correct no okay yeah absolutely yeah we don't we don't even have any wolves in this area okay the the forestry service has tried to transplant them and they put a pack of them or like a male and a female over the California border down by Mount Shasta. But the Rogue Valley where we live, there aren't any wolves. There are coyotes. And I definitely know what coyotes look like. Mm-hmm. I've seen them my whole life. And, and being that this creature is bigger than your St. Bernard, do you think it could easily snatch up a child? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I if if this thing were able to stand up on, I mean, as his head was crossing past my car on the left, his tail was up in the air on the right side of my car. Yeah. If that thing had been able to stand up, it would have been well over six feet tall and just massive. Did it have a it big tail? It was just all... Yeah, it did. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it was bushy like the rest of it. The whole thing was just big and bulky and furry. Mm-hmm. Could you see the eyes? I, well, I, I saw its face um, at a side view mm-hmm. after it passed my car just for a split second. And I, nothing jumped out at me that said odd other than the fact that this thing was just massive. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I didn't see eyes. I saw like a profile of its, of its face for just a split second. Mm -hmm. Years ago on monster quest, I seen a clip that somebody submitted of this giant canine creature and it's like gray and it's like jumping around this forested area i don't know if you've ever seen that have you i don't think i have okay i'll have to find that clip and share it with you but yeah it looked like um yeah an unknown canine creature and it seemed to be very large yeah this thing was definitely definitely not something i'd ever seen before yeah okay yeah if you want to continue with your encounters i'm all ears okay All right, so the next major thing that happened was just this last May, and my daughter's grandfather had been flown to a hospital in Las Vegas. They lived in Reno, her grandparents did, and he had collapsed, and he was flown to a hospital in Reno, and she was told that They didn't know how much longer he would be alive. If she wanted to say goodbye to him, come down now. So she called me and told me, I'm driving to Vegas tomorrow. Papa's dying. I need to go say goodbye to him. And I asked her, is Robbie going with you? And she goes, no, I'm I'm just going to drive. And I said, well, no, you're not. (laughs) She was 28 years old and we're a long way from Las Vegas. So I told her, nope, I'll come and pick you up. And you and I'll go together. Okay, cool. Road trip. Sad, but it's our road trip. So we drive down there. She says her goodbyes. I say my goodbyes to him too, because I love him. And then um, we drove down in one night, just a straight shot all the way through. And when we were coming home, we drove straight through on the way back. And we she googled up the quickest way to get there and back and so she found these through the mountain roads that aren't highly trafficked and that's the way we went so we were just backtracking and we were we had come up all the way up we were in northern california there's a little town 
called Susanville, nestled kind of at the foot of where the bottom hills of the Sierra Nevada start. And we had come through town and we're just heading up over these foothills that would take us to Mount Shasta and then to I-5 and home. So we had stopped a little ways before that to get coffee. And I I talk to everybody all the time. So while my daughter's in the store, I'm chatting with these guys that just pulled up and, you know, what are you guys doing out this late? And what are you doing here? Well, we're heading home and really where's home? Um, Medford. And he's like, okay, so the highway that you're going to be traveling on, there are a lot of deer. You need to be very, very careful. And I just kind of went, well, yeah, we're in the mountains. We've lived here our whole lives. We hunt and we know how to drive in the mountains at night. We know what to look for. And the guy was like, no, you need to take me very seriously. There are a lot of deer. And so I went, okay, well, yeah, I'll be careful. Thank you. So we get in the car and we head on out right outside of Susanville. I swear, like every 20 feet, there was a herd of deer. So we we had to drive probably like 35, 40 miles an hour. And it's a wide highway and there's no traffic and it's not all windy and crazy. But there are so many deer, we're being very, very, very cautious. So we're driving along. And on the right side, she's driving my car. I'm I'm shotgun. And on my side of the road, we see another deer. This one's not with the herd. It's just by itself. And so as we're coming up to it, it's very close to the side of the road. So she lets off the gas because we don't know if it's going to bolt and jump, you know, right in front of the car. So we're sort of slowing down as we're coasting by it and we're looking at it and it has its front legs and its back legs spread out really wide like it is trying to do the splits. Like really wide. And its legs are insanely long. All the rest of it that we can see at this point, because we haven't pulled parallel to it, all the rest of it looks normal. It has a rack and it's got its head down on the ground like it's eating grass. So by the time we're completely parallel with it, it lifts its head up and swivels the top of its body and it looks right in the window at both of us. And this thing had it it had an insanely long face like three feet long and it had red eyes they um i had a lot of people ask well was it eye shine no our headlights were past it at that point and deer don't have red eye shine there weren't any lights shining on it and its ears looked normal its fur looked normal everything looked normal about it except for its legs and its and its head and i mean it had to lift its head up as it was turning to look at us to get its face up off the ground because it's it looked like someone had taken a hold of its face and stretched it really really long and it was looking right at right in the car at both of us, and we were completely speechless. And she gunned it; she took off. And the first thing I said was, "That thing is not from here." And she screamed, "What the hell was that?" And we both said at the same time, "It had red eyes. Nothing has red eyes like that." they were illuminated from inside of its skull it was the and i had this feeling i've seen some weird stuff in my life but i had this feeling that 
it's it's almost like it told me if you had stopped i would have torn your car apart and i would have torn both of you to pieces and i was just telling her just go just go just go we had both both brought our handguns with us um they weren't legal to have in nevada or in oregon or not oregon california but um i figured you know if we run across a ted bundy on the way we're not going down and i'll take a ticket i'll risk them taking my gun but we're not making that trip without our guns and i started digging in the back back seat of the car for my gun and the whole time I was thinking this thing would never have stopped that thing. Nothing could have stopped that thing. And and a, like, I don't know, three or four miles up the road, there was a railroad track. And I looked at her and I said, oh, my God, what would we have done if there had been a train? And she said, I would have driven in a circle. I would have just kept driving in a circle until it was passed. I was not stopping. And I, I told her, people are there. There's no way anyone's going to believe this. I mean, we 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 saw heard Batman fly over our house. We've both seen a werewolf run in front of the car, and now we've seen this thing. And I had a lot of uh, like my husband. Did you think about stopping? <laughs> Hell no, no. You don't stop when you see something like that. And her and her husband go out hunting all the time and they go out camping in the woods. And I'm like, oh, my God, Chrissy, please be careful now when you're out there. And this thing is now a couple of hundred miles away from us. But I still have this. It knows me. It knows her. It looked right into both of our eyes. It, the idea of that thing is terrifying. I have always wanted to build a log house and build it out in the woods and and live as much off the land as I possibly could, could and have a huge fireplace in my bedroom. Most of the time, I can't even come outside and smoke at night anymore. I'll sit in the doorway. Sometimes I'll bring my gun outside with me. I don't feel safe anymore. I, I honestly think my biggest reason for sharing um, this story about this thing is that somebody else has seen one. Um, I looked up cryptids on my on my phone and on the computer, and I've nothing looks like this thing looked. People keep asking me, did it look like a did it look like um a wolf? Did it stand on two legs? Um, you know, they'll show me pictures of things that have really long human arms. No, this thing looks like a normal deer until it looked at us. A normal deer with insanely long legs. So long that in order for its long face to reach the ground, it has to do splits. Um, uh, just a probably less than a week after that happened, um, I was inside and I had the blinds open on this window that looks right out into the woods in front of my house. And I feed the deer all the time. I've gotten them so that there was one that she would almost take the food out of my hand. I put so much energy into trying to show this beautiful creature how much I love them and so there are always deer coming through and one night I'm standing inside and I look out the window and there's a deer standing in these trees right in front of of the window and it's just standing there looking in the window and at first I thought she's waiting for me to bring an apple out because if I see them, I'll bring apples out to them. But I didn't have any apples. So then I thought, okay, well, she'll, you know, she'll wait a few minutes and realize I'm not coming out and leave. That deer stood there for a half an hour and stared at my window. Just that alone has absolutely freaked me out. 
everything to me now that I see that's a little bit of a deviation off of the norm is a huge thing now. It's it's just very not cool. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to be afraid of the woods. And I'm you know, I've I spent I have grandchildren and my little granddaughter, she heard me telling my son about it. And I kept telling him, Kyle, it was a monster. This thing was a monster. And then my granddaughter hears me, Nana, you always said that monsters aren't real. You know, and, and I'm I'm thinking, I, I can't lie to her. I don't lie. But I don't want to tell her, yeah, they are. Yeah. It, that That's just left me, that one, that one knocked me for a loop. Well, first of all, it's, it's okay. And I believe you 100%. And um, there's just things out there that science can't explain or no one out there can explain, but they're out there nonetheless. And um, yeah, I believe you 100%. I, I don't even know. I don't even know that my husband believes me. He, he'll he tell me, well, you saw something. But he's seen the, the change in me. And we were having an argument one time and he mentioned something about a log house in the woods is kind of off the table now. And I thought, you know what? It probably is. That's really sad. <clears throat> um, I I talked to a guy in Florida, he's a part of this um, cryptid group that I I joined up with just to read other people's experiences. And he contacted me, he messaged me and said, I had an experience very similar to yours. Cause I told people, I think that was a skinwalker. I really do. And he's half native American and his his grandmother and great grandmother are the ones that raised him and they're full blooded and his great grandmother was a medicine woman and she told him about skinwalkers so when he saw his when he was like 19 he knew exactly what it was and this thing it he thought it was going to climb over the hood of his truck and come through the windshield at him but he he's like tell me exactly what it looked like because there's something else called a knot deer. I guess a lot of people said, oh, you saw a knot deer. No, that's not what I saw. <laughs> I saw a skinwalker. Yeah. And he, he did tell me if you're ever back down in that area again, it's going to know that you're there. Because I was afraid that it could follow me. I didn't know if it would follow follow me home. But he said they're territorial. They have a region that that's their area and they don't normally go outside of that region. So hmm. I, I don't think it's going to follow me, but yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Let, let's hope not. Um, when you described the creature to me, it sounded like a Wendigo. Um, do you think the Wendigo originates from the skinwalker being that it was, um, an odd creature with split legs that, resembled a deer but wasn't yeah um the, some of the people that i've talked to wendigo is a skinwalker it's just a native name for a skinwalker okay so the skinwalker tribes yeah the skinwalker transforms into different creatures and it has to cannibalize on humans to keep that shape is that correct i'm not sure if that's correct what he told me is that um, it's a form of Native American witchcraft. And to be initiated into it, you have to do a horrific um, thing. I can't think of a big enough word for it. You have to do something absolutely inhumane and horrific to a family member. And he said that usually translates into killing and eating one of your family members. And that once you have done that, along with other rituals that he didn't go into, 
um, he said they can take the skin of whatever animal they want and wrap it around themselves and transform into that animal. Yeah. So and through he, like rituals, um, the occult, satanic worship, whatever you want to call it, this creature can um, manifest. Is that correct? Or yeah. I mean, physically yeah. from a human being that can transform <laughs> into something evil. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's freaky to think about. And I apologize for saying the names of these oh, no. beings. I know no, that it, brings bad juju, and um, I don't want to bring that on you. Um, I I got over that. Yeah, because um, well, my daughter calls it a flesh pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Her and her friends. Um, and, and when she first said it, I was like, "What is that?" And she's like, "What did we see?" Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Um, was the I don't face... know. That... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, I was gonna no, ask. That's was okay. Was the face stretched out like a moose? Like, was it that elongated? <sighs> yeah, and then some. Okay, and you could see the creature pretty well, even though it was dark. Is that correct? Yeah, we could. I could see it very well. It. It. This was. Um, well, it was in May, so the days were longer, and I'm thinking it was about. 8 30 somewhere in there it wasn't dark 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 the sun was definitely below the horizon but it was light enough out that they 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 have the all the trees and stuff cleared from the edge of the road so that if something falls over it doesn't fall on the highway so there was quite a long stretch of just mowed down grass and then the the true forest started and this thing was standing closer to the road than the edge of the forest. So as we were coming up on it, we could see its entire body. It wasn't dark enough to start looking for eye shine at that point. About a half an hour later, it got dark enough that we, you know, she, she was like, okay, you keep an eye on your side of the road for eye shine. I'll keep an eye on my side of the road. You know, at that point, I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for red eye shine now, Christy. I'm not looking for, I'm not scared of deer anymore. Mm -hmm. did but yeah, you, we could see the whole body. Did you look in the mirror to see if it was following you guys when you took off and did it? No. Um, I, well, as we were driving past it, I, you know, I kept kind of turning and turning and turning until um, I'd have to roll my window down to see it. And it didn't it didn't follow us. It watched the car. But it didn't follow us. It didn't move. Its legs were still all spread out. And um, when I when I first talked with this guy about it, I told him. It was eating grass. When we came up on it, its head was down and it was eating grass. And he said, well, you know, not to sound morbid, but I'm I'm highly skeptical that it was eating grass. It was eating a kill. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. It had to have been eating something else. Yeah. Okay. Yep. What feeling did you get when you guys, when you and the creature locked eyes? Well, at first, my my rational mind was telling me, you can't be seeing this. So it was kind of like I didn't quite believe it. I was, it was, I guess I was in shock because it was kind of like this in my head. And then once we got far enough past it, I swung my head around and looked at my daughter and she's, you know, she's trying to drive. She's speeding up, but she's looking at me. And it's just absolute terror on her face. And and that's what, when I said, that thing is not from here. And then it was just bone-chilling terror. Because I realized that thing could have come through the car in a heartbeat. It could have torn that car apart. And it would have torn us apart. And I just started shaking and, and 
just drive, just drive, 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 drive. Yeah. Have you ever done any research on this highway to see if there is any other skinwalker encounters? My daughter has, and she, yeah, she called me up and she said, well, did you know that Mount Shasta is like notorious for every type of supernatural occurrence anybody has ever had? And I went, yeah, I'm, I believe that. I totally believe that. Because the, the, I don't, I can't remember. The only guy's name I can remember is Gimlin. Um, the, the Sasquatch yeah. film. It's Roger That's Patterson kind of, and Bob Gimlin, I do believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, there is that their sighting was in the Cascades, which, um, Mount Shasta, it's an active volcano. Um, it, it, comes down into a, like a little bit of a valley and then the coastal cascades hit and their encounter was in the coastal cascades which where i live right now we're right in the foothills of the cascades we're so, in the same mountain range so it's like bordering california is that correct yeah okay. um yeah we're really close to the border of california Okay. Ashland is the last town and it's from where I'm at right now. It's only two towns away. It's maybe, maybe 50 miles. Mm -hmm. And, um, after this encounter, I don't want to get too personal into it, but, um, did That's you, okay. did you have any nightmares about this? I haven't had any nightmares. Yeah. And this guy I talked to, he asked me if I've had nightmares. I haven't. Because yeah. he told me he had nightmares for years. I'm thankful that I haven't. Uh, I don't know if I could deal with it. I, I might have to pack up and move into town if that if that were to start. But, yeah, thankfully I haven't had any. Yeah. And um, any UFO alien activity? Um, actually, um, yeah, I forgot about that. When I was 12... Um, I was my with my younger sister again, and we lived in this little tiny town out in central Oregon called Dayville. It, it, the population hit 200 when we moved there, and her and I were, we owned a restaurant there, and her and I were walking from our step-grandparents' house down to the restaurant one very early evening, and there's... Um, there's this mountain, they're like rolling treeless mountains. Um, there was one right at the end of town. And as we're walking, we have our we have a white German shepherd, Kim. She's walking with us. And we're about halfway to the restaurant. And it's not even night. A UFO comes up from behind this mountain. The mountain is called Casey's Slide. And it, it comes up from behind the mountain and it hovers in the air right over the top of the town. And it did not make a sound. It didn't move the air. It looked like it was silver, metallic, and it was absolutely huge. And we stopped and our dog started growling and the fur stood up all over her body and she started walking in circles around us. And it was just there for, you know, maybe five seconds. We're both just standing there looking at it. And then it left and it left so fast that I was only able to catch the direction it went in my peripheral vision. And it didn't move the air. It didn't make a sound. I grabbed a hold of my sister and we ran down to our restaurant and to this day, I, I rag her about this. She had absolutely no memory of seeing this thing. And it just, I thought she was lying. I was so mad at her. And she, she doesn't, doesn't remember it. And I, I tell her to this day, if Kimmy Sue could talk, if she were here, 
She would verify this for me, staff. That's, you know, that's another one of those. Yeah, right. What'd you see today, Stacy? Mm -hmm. What shape was the craft? It was like a dinner plate. It was round like a dinner plate. I didn't see the top of it. So I don't know if it was domed or anything. It was just silver and shiny silver and round like a dinner plate. And another thing, this town is so small. How on earth am I the only one that saw this thing? Nobody in town talked about it. And this was like five o'clock in the evening. You know, the sun is still kind of up. It's behind the hills, but the sky is like that rosy, pretty color of a summer evening. And nobody else in this town saw it. Yeah, that's normally how and it goes. I, I've asked myself over the years, is that something that you could have dreamed? Because I would rather find a reasonable explanation for it. Like, yeah, you dreamed that whole thing. But Stephanie remembers me trying to get her to tell our mother what we just saw. Yeah, I remember you doing that. I remember, but I don't remember seeing it. So I know that it wasn't a dream. And how is it that one person can see all of this really weird stuff? Most people go their entire lives and they'll have one bizarre encounter. And and that's kind of, I think that's kind of normal. A lot of people never have anything. And yet I have this stockpile of bizarre things. Yeah. Yeah. I ask myself that same question every day. Um, did you have more encounters or experiences after you encountered the skinwalker? Is there more that happened? Um, not concerning the skinwalker, but, um, after the skinwalker, that's when I started watching YouTube <clears throat> and that's how I found you. And about a week ago, I took my, um, my grandson for a walk. There's like nature trails by our place. And there's a fence that runs not too far from my front door of private property that these people on the other side own, own all that. So you can't cross it. But I, I took my cell phone and I said, we're going to go see if we can find some Bigfoot stuff just to see. And I started walking with them down the nature trail. And here's an X. Here's some arches. Here's a madrone tree that the branch was completely twisted until the fibers split apart. I don't, did I send you that, the picture of the twisted one? Yeah, you did. And it definitely looks like Sasquatch. Yeah, like right here. Um, there was, there's another broken one. Um, last Last weekend, this friend of mine, Linda, and I, we went up to a place up in the Applegate, um, which is notorious for Bigfoot up there, that we had been once before because, you know, she she's huge into hunting for Bigfoot. So she's like, okay, we're going to go up there and we're going to go back. She had taken me there once before and we didn't see anything or hear anything. Well, we heard what sounded like heavy footsteps and... Um, the, the ground on the side of this hill, it's, it's never been, nothing's ever been cleared away from it. So it literally has thousands of years of layers of decomposed pine trees and oak trees and pine needles and leaves. So the ground is like soft. I don't know if you've ever walked on, on ground like that. It's, you know, it's all decomposed, so it's dirt, but it's really deep and it's soft and almost in some places it's spongy. And we were sitting on a stump and she had me singing nursery rhymes with her because she said Bigfoot like women's voices and they like music. So her and I were singing 
and we heard what sounded like footprints, but we weren't sure, but we could feel the vibration through the ground in our feet. So, you know, we were just like, wow, that was cool. That could have been it. Yeah, that could have been it. So anyway, this last weekend, I, I called her up and said, we're going back up there because now I know what I'm looking for. I want to see what's up there. And this this entire area is full of Bigfoot sign. The, you showed one. I don't know if I watched it last night. I watch I watch your show every night, every day. I appreciate um, that. There's, yeah, absolutely. Um, you're educating me. So there was one where um, a tree had been shoved up into another tree, and the trunk of it was hanging, like free hanging from the tree, and you could walk up and grab a hold of of the tree that's just suspended there in the air. We found one exactly like that. We found so many arches that. I was looking at them going, okay, those got, those have to be natural phenomenon. There are too many. Some of them probably are Bigfoot. I'm going to take pictures of the ones that I think are, but there's so many, they couldn't all possibly be. Yeah, it looks like and, there's a family group in there. You got um, awesome uh -huh. tree breaks, some axes, some axes that look like they were made by juveniles, these little sticks that are weaved in between trees and it looks like isn't it, that a trip yeah it's, and i um, tried to pull some of those out and you can't pull them out oh wow yeah. and i yeah and where the three dead trees were drug across the road uh -huh. and propped up on the bank so that you can't get a vehicle through there yeah i i think i sent you that i took two pictures of it one as we were approaching it and then one as we got past it, and these are massive pine, pine trunks. They're huge. Yeah. So it and seems then, like they were hanging out in the pines. Yes. And there are deer all over up in there. They were walking across this little bluff as we were walking up the, the no access road that the area that we were in, the forest service has a huge metal bar gate that's padlocked shut. And the trees grow so close to it that you couldn't get you couldn't get a four wheeler around the side of that barricade. You can't get anything in there. Yeah. And and the road that we were walking on, um, there's grass growing all up it. Mm. Nothing has been up in there. Yeah, it's my theory that the forest service if they have any inclination any idea that sasquatch are in a certain area they'll close that particular forest road and i've seen it in my areas i don't know for sure but i've noticed where the sasquatch are the gates will be closed or if there's been like a story there in the past an encounter they'll close that gate well that's pretty much what had to have happened in this spot there were two places where um, trunks of trees had been shoved through the tops of other deciduous trees. And they're like 30, 40 feet up in the air, shoved right through the tops of these trees. It, it's almost like the Sasquatch was using it as a javelin. And there were two separate trees that had these great big, huge tree trunks stuck through the middle mm -hmm. of these big huge massive trees and um let me ask you do you feel like you were led to this area like did you just happen to go to this structure area all on your own like you walked right up on it or did you have to look around um, for a long time no linda linda's the one that took me there and i i, I didn't even think to ask what made her come up in into this area because she'd been up there once before me but um so it, it's been like three years the first time i went there was like three years ago mm -hmm. and she's been up there a couple of times so when i messaged her last week and told her we're going back up there because if we felt something you know the vibration in the ground I'm betting that we're going to see something up there and I want to go see what's there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll, 
I'll ask her if she felt, you know, why did you pick this area, woman? Yeah, just ask her if that was like a first time thing. Like, I've noticed some areas that I go to, the first time I ever go there and explore, I find Sasquatch structures. And there's people that have looked, you know, their entire lives and never find them. So I feel like um, they knew I was coming there. I know that sounds weird, but. I no, know. it I, doesn't. I feel like, I don't know. <clears throat> it's just strange. No, I, I don't think it sounds weird at all because when I got here, when we first moved here, within three nights, it let me know that it was here. And it's, I didn't know that this was a Bigfoot area. I was just looking forward to being out in the woods and, you know, making friends with the deer and the birds and the hummingbirds and, you know, and then all of a sudden call whack. And I knew I'd never heard one before. Never, never. But I knew as soon as I heard it, haha, that's what I yelled out. I heard that. I know you're here and you obviously know I'm here. And then I think it was probably about three weeks later, it brought me the rock. But I, I collect rocks. I have potted fern in, in, in front of my front door and I have odd shaped rocks that I find all over the place and I put them in my flower pots and I have a basket of round rocks that all of my grandchildren have played with. So this thing knew that I had a thing for rocks. That's just what I believe. And it brought me a rock. Okay. Describe that experience. Um, how do you know it brought you a rock? Did it like put it in front of your door on your porch? Um, out at the end of where our little lot is, it's, mm -hmm. they have it boundaried off with, with, um, piled up rocks that they've taken from the property and they made like a little tiny mini wall and then they set logs across the top of it. And there was one, um, there's one off to the left of me. I'm looking at the area right now and it has the rocks that they use to gather up to build the little log thing. And I have been over there before with my granddaughter because there's a, a rotten tree stump and she wanted to make it into a fairy house so i took sticks from that i found around on the ground and broke them off and i weaved wire through and i made this really cute little door for the front of the fairy house and then she had a big chunk of bark that she put on top of it for for the roof and the day that i found it I went out to check on on her little fairy house to see if any of the there's wild turkeys here and they tear everything up. And there's like a, a nature, a deer trail right in front of us that goes along that fence line. And right next to her little fairy house is this great big huge rock. It's right in the middle of the deer trail. It had never been there before. It was just there one day. And I I knew as soon as I saw it that that was for me. Yeah. That was my rock. Yeah, they do that for sure. They'll put them in the middle of the trail. I've seen, I've seen them put like rock circles on people's porches or um, in areas where people research. So, um, yeah, it's definitely Sasquatch activity. Um, yeah, tell me what else happened after this? Was there more experiences that, that happened? Um, the, I, I can't, not anything since we went up and took the pictures and that, that hasn't even been two weeks. Um, we, we need to go back up there, but she had to leave town and isn't going to be back for a while. And I don't want to go up by myself. It's quite a ways out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, I always take you. my gun with me. Yeah. I, I take a gun with me when I go, but there's safety in numbers. And I, yeah. I'd i rather not want to um, be up, up there by myself. So I'll wait, wait till she gets back. But I took up um, some fresh green beans from my stepson's garden and some carrots and an apple. And the apple I stuffed up in the crook of a tree and you have to, there's no way a deer could get to it. And a deer is the only thing up there that would eat it. 
squirrels don't eat them. Um, there are a lot of cougar up there. They don't eat them. The deer would not be able to get to it. So I'm, I'm just kind of itching for her to get back because we need to go up and see. I told her I want to start gifting with them. I want to see if they'll bring us something. And I told her the next time we come up, we're bringing up a jar of peanut butter because I've seen through your show what they do with jars of peanut butter. Yeah, I think that would be one of the best things you could take up there. Um, Yep. So when you moved to this new farmhouse, you you mentioned that it was haunted. Can you describe a little bit of that? Um. Well, when we were moving in, we had a U-Haul backed up to the garage door and we were moving the heavy furniture um, through the garage into the house. It was the straightest shot with the widest doorways. And both my husband and my stepson, the first time they walked through that doorway into the house, they both got sprayed in the face with water. Yeah. So, yeah, that is yeah they both came out and went, okay, that was really fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you've just been blessed. I don't know. And this I is the same, this is the same house that you heard the growls at or the yes. roars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and the Batman and the wolf thing. Yeah. Yep. It all happened in that house. And you, you probably think about how weird it is that you've had cryptid activity, paranormal activity, and um, things of that nature all in the same place. Because that happened to me at my old place. Like I had Bigfoot activity, paranormal stuff happening in the house, strange lights out in the sky. What do you think that means? Do you think it's all connected? Um, I think it's all connected to me. Um. I I um, have seen spirits since I was a little girl. Um, I have very strong memories of a couple of my past lives. One of them, I'm really torn now because one of them I know happened in a town in... Uh, northeastern california not very far from the highway that my daughter and i saw the skinwalker and i stumbled across the town on accident years ago and i recognized it when i saw it it fit into those memories like crazy i was describing what the town looked like before we got to the town and i want to go back um i want I, I want to go find where I lived because I, I know if I can get back to that town, I can go right to where I lived. Um, but I'm I'm hesitant to go now because it's I don't know if it's in territory of that skinwalker. So, um, yeah, I've, I'm I was always kind of that little girl that. I could see spirits and I could hear things that weren't there. And um, I think that when people have that ability, these otherworldly things recognize you when you're when you're there and probably make themselves known to you because they know that you're going to see them or you're going to hear them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like if you take notice of them, they'll take notice of you. Um, Mm -hmm. I almost wonder... Like you mentioned, when you saw the skinwalker, like that shouldn't be here. I almost wonder if this is like a glitch in the matrix. Like, I don't know, people who are like introverts or just different individuals render life in a different way than most people. And that's not to say like it didn't happen, but like um, maybe we're um, connected to it in some way. I don't know. That, I feel that like, totally makes sense. I feel like life is programmed. Like if you've ever seen glitches in the matrix, like certain videos that people post up on YouTube or um, things that people talk about as far as like the Bermuda Triangle, I feel like, I don't know, there's like a higher power that can like create something that shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I do believe that. I I have 
<laughs> after I watched um, The Matrix, every once in a while, I, and I've done this my whole life, I'll see something that's just kind of like, eh, oh, that was odd. What the hell was that? But after seeing that movie, I would laugh and go, oh, that's a glitch in The Matrix. So, yeah, I I, I totally get what you're saying. And, and it makes sense to me. And this world, reality, is multidimensional. There are more dimensions. I had a chemistry teacher in college try to explain it to us one time. And he said, as the human brain and the human intellect and spirituality evolve, because that's what we're doing, more and more of us are going to be able to catch glimpses of things from different dimensions that are existing right here with us. We're just not evolved yet enough for, for us to be able to, I guess, mentally handle it but we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> explanation. I, some of us are just a little, a little more tuned into it, I guess, than, than other people are. But uh, I mean, in that house, you could hear people laughing. My daughter thought I was in the bathroom one day talking on the phone, laughing. And she went in there and there was nobody there. And it, it was like a woman's laugh. Or sometimes at night I would be laying in bed and I would hear a conversation happening between a man and a woman. I could never tell what they were saying, but I could hear their voices. Yeah. Yeah. I've and had I that could, happen could, too. Yeah. It sounds like you're sitting outside of the principal's office when you're in trouble. Like you can hear people in there talking, but you can't make out what they're saying. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And, and I'm the type of, <laughs> I'm the type, the first time I heard that, I was like, okay, I've taken, I've worked in the mental health field and I've taken some psychology classes and people that are crazy don't know they're crazy. People that hear voices that have schizophrenia, they don't know that those people aren't there. So I know that what I'm hearing does not mean that I'm crazy. Yeah. So I, you know, it's like, I always have to like fact check. Mm -hmm. Okay, is this really happening or do you go need to talk to somebody? Yeah. And these things are really happening. Yeah. I I was growing up Catholic and I was taught that we're in a battle for our souls between good and evil and it kind of makes me think like some of this activity is what they're talking about. Yeah, I I yeah, I I get that. Um I know that there's been a lot of talk recently about um, the fallen angels that um, bred with humans. And in the days of Noah, they, they had these other species of beings that God didn't put here. He did not intend for them to be here, but they were here. They're, they're here and apparently did not get wiped out when the great flood happened. Some of them are still here. So, I mean, that's, it's another theory, but it, it makes sense too. Mm -hmm. I've wondered that possibly where these giant beings were buried at are the areas where this phenomenon is happening at. Like the land is cursed. Maybe like they don't have a physical body, but their spirit still remains in this world because like hell was created, created for the devil and his angels and people who don't listen and have heaven is for God and his angels. But where do these giants go? Like if they don't have a, a place. Yeah. Yeah. And, and their energy would still be here. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to say. And the native Americans curse this land after they lost it to the settlers. So it makes me wonder yeah. if that has something to do with it as well. Yeah, boy, let me tell you, the Native American religion culture was, just blows my mind. They were very magical people. Yeah. yeah so, absolutely. yeah, it, 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 I, I could imagine their curses sticking around for a while because they put a lot of energy into it when they would do stuff like that. Yeah, and it seemed like they were very aware of the phenomenon and there were certain shamans that understood it more than the rest of the population. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, Stacy, I think that pretty well covers your entire story and all your accounts. Do you have anything else that you would like to add? Um, I don't, I don't think so. No. Um, I, I just, I want to thank you though. I, I know what, what led you into, into starting your show. Um, but I've become addicted to it. Um, it's my favorite are about David and the killing fields. That just blows my mind. Um, but I, I've, I've read a lot of stuff and I've watched other um, Bigfoot shows and stuff. None of them have educated me except for yours. Yeah, yeah. And when I first told my Bigfoot encounters years ago on Bigfoot Odyssey and other channels, um, I was too afraid to mention the paranormal stuff or the other cryptids. I only talked about Bigfoot and um, that bothered me. And I wanted, I wanted to find a place where people could share all their experiences so i decided okay i'm gonna have to tell i'm gonna have to tell what happened and put it up on the channel and that's what i did i told all my paranormal stories my bigfoot encounters the strange lights that i've seen and it seems like it's paved a way for other people to share their experiences as well it has yep it has i mean even even my best friend wanted to hear about the skinwalker mm -hmm. and as i'm telling her and her husband i can see in her eyes that she doesn't quite believe it and i mean i this woman is closer than any of my sisters i love her unconditionally and i know she loves me unconditionally she knows i would never lie but this it's so outrageous that a rational mind just kind of goes really now nah, how can that be but like all of your people that have come on your show have said once you see that for yourself you cannot deny it yeah. and people can call me a liar i won't talk about it to people that i know are just going to look down their nose at me but thankfully there are people like the ones that come on your show the more I heard those people talking, the more I knew that I could tell you about this. Yeah, and I'm glad you did. And I I do believe you 110%. And I want you to know it is going to be okay. I'm on your side. And I know a lot of the people listening are as well. Thank you. Yeah. That helps. <laughs> that yeah. helps a lot. It does. And it means a lot, too, that, that there's a there's a lot of people out there that have been exactly in my shoes and know exactly how I feel. And to have people tell you, I believe you, it means the world. Yeah. It means everything. Yeah. And it's a dark feeling thinking mm -hmm. about everything you experience and wondering why me and why does the regular Joe not experience anything at all? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I, I asked myself that for many, many years. How is it possible to have an encounter or two throughout your life? That's an amazing thing to just be bombarded with it when you're least expecting it. And each one of them has been so different. Like, what is it about me? <laughs> okay, I know I've always been the, you know, the little genetic throwback in the family. Um, but these things are real. They're real. They're my, my reality. I live with it every day. Yeah. And are you anticipating something else to happen in the near future? I never know when. I know that Linda and I are going to start putting a lot more energy into trying to make contact, really, because that's, that's my goal. I want them to know I'm out there and that I think they're amazing. I respect them. I want to see them. I would never harm them ever, 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 but I want them, I want to be able to see one. Yeah. Well, it might happen if you put your energy towards it. Yeah. Yep. That's my goal. Okay. Well, Stacy, I appreciate your time and your willingness to share all these encounters openly. 
Um, Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much, Miguel. Yeah, it's no problem. And if you encounter anything else, definitely reach back out to me and we can talk about it for sure. Okay. I will for sure. <laughs> I will. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you go All for right. the night and um, thank you so much for your time and you have a good night. All right. Thank you. You, you as well. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you very much, Stacy, for sharing your encounters with me and everyone here on Sasquatch Theory. And like I said, I truly believe you. And I know these things are out there. It's creepy because the more stories I hear, the more encounters I hear about these things, the more fear it puts in me. And um, it makes it harder to go out and camp. But um, nonetheless, me and the group plan on getting out there in the woods, doing some research down in the Mark Twain Forest. I am going back to the killing fields and hopefully with this new e-bike. There are many topics and things out there in this universe that we just don't understand and um, some supernatural things need supernatural answers and it's good to theorize and think outside the box so don't ever let anyone ridicule you or tell you that you're wrong just because no one really knows. And um, the only thing that we do know is that these creatures are out there, they're roaming the forest and many people have no idea they just don't know they exist whether they don't believe or they just haven't heard about it so it's good to pump these stories out there and yeah stacy take care of yourself and thank you everyone for watching until the next one take care everyone